complete statement. I would like to have it entered into the record and that it back to the chair. Without objection, and with that, Commander Hope, we will turn it over to you to introduce those that are with you and make your remarks. And thank you for being with us. Thank you, Chairman Isaacson, Chairman Miller, Ranking Member Blumenthal, Ranking Member Brown. Members, thank you for convening today's hearing. Before introducing our distinguished guest, I want to extend DAV's sincere appreciation to all of the members of both committees on behalf of the more than 1.4 million members of DAV and its auxiliary. For the support that you have given our nation's wounded, injured, and ill veterans and their families. We wish you all the best in the 114th Congress, and we stand ready to assist you and your staffs on the issues most important to disabled veterans, their dependents, and survivors. It's an honor to appear before you to present DAV's legislative program and to share our organization's accomplishments over the past year. I want to recognize those seated at the table with me, as well as some distinguished guests in, in attendance. DAV National Adjutant and CEO Mark Burgess, Executive Directors Barry Jesenowski and Gary Augustine, Service Director Jim Marzalak, Legislative Director Joe Violante, Voluntary Services Director John Kleinis, Employment Director Jeff Hall, Auxiliary National Commander Leanne Carg of Minnesota, Auxiliary National Adjutant Patricia Kemper of Kentucky, DAV Senior Vice Commander Moses McIntosh of Georgia, Junior Vice Commanders David Riley of Alabama, Delphine Metcalf Foster of California, Bridget Marker of Oregon, and missing today, but here in our hearts, Dennis Crawler of New York, who sadly passed away on January the 8th of this year. National Judge Advocate Mike Dobbermeyer of North Dakota. Immediate past National Commander Joseph Johnston of Ohio. Chaplain Michael Dover of Georgia. And National Chief of Staff Rodney Tucker of North Carolina. Ask DAV's National Executive Committee to please stand or raise your hand to be recognized. Will the members of the National Legislative Interim Committee also stand or raise your hand? I'd also like to recognize the DAV delegation from my home state of North Carolina. Mr. Chairman, I have submitted my written testimony for record. My statement thoroughly details DAV's key legislative priorities for the 114th Congress and reports our accomplishments. As an organization of wounded, injured, and ill wartime veterans, we recognize the importance and value of standing together. I hope every member of these committees stands with us and holds close the sincere promises that have been made to help sick and injured veterans heal from their physical and mental wounds and to live their lives with dignity and respect. DAV is proud of who we are and what we accomplish every day to keep these sacred promises. Mr. Chairman, my personal story is a prime example of what DAV does for those wounded, injured, or made ill during military service. I served in the Republic of Vietnam with the U.S. Army as a pilot of the 227th Assault Helicopter Company, 1st Air Cavalry Division. In 1969, I was wounded in combat. My helicopter was shot down. The crash resulted in the amputation of my left arm at the shoulder and numerous other injuries. After rehabilitation in military and VA facilities, I couldn't envision what my purpose in life would be. By chance, I met a World War II veteran who had spent 42 months in a Japanese POW camp. I asked him what gave him hope when he came home devastated by injury and disease, and I asked him how he found his purpose in life. Without hesitating, he said, go see the DAV. I followed his advice, and this organization gave me a rewarding career as a national service officer for the next 31 years. I truly believe DAV saved me at a time when I had no other plan for my life. So I know firsthand how DAV changes lives, and along with so many other service officers, many in this room, it has been my mission to help other veterans find their way. Since there are many new members on the committees, I'd like to share some of the important services that we provide. 
DEV's primary mission is providing free professional assistance, representing all veterans and their families in the VA claim process. This is accomplished by more than 3,800 chapter, department, transition, and national service officers, including DAV accredited county veteran service officers located across the country. During 2014, more than 270 dedicated and highly trained DAV National Service Officers filed over 221,000 new VA claims for benefits. We help veterans obtain more than $3.7 billion in new and retroactive benefits, and we've reached 1 million power of attorneys for claims. DAV also has a fleet of 10 mobile service officers. Last year, they traveled over 100,000 miles to extend our services to local communities. I'm also proud to highlight that 11,000 DAV and auxiliary volunteers provided more than 1.7 hours of service, saving taxpayers over $39 million. Last year, DAV donated 138 vans to VA facilities, which helped transport nearly 600,000 veterans to health care appointments. Mr. Chairman, I have highlighted a number of our core programs and services, but we offer many more. Our co-sponsorship with VA of the Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic, our Charitable Service Trust, Local Veterans Assistance Program, Disaster Relief Fund, and Scholarship Awards are additional DAV programs that change lives. We're also proud to share that DAV initiated a new Veterans Employment Program in 2014. This program combines DAV's benefits and claims assistance with job fairs. Last year, DAV sponsored 34 job fairs in 29 cities, offering veterans and dependents opportunities for nearly 2,000 employees. Over 14,000 attended these events, and we will sponsor over 70 of these job fairs in 2015. We encourage you to contact DAV to learn more about these programs or if you need assistance helping veterans with their disability claims. As wartime service disabled veterans, we have a vested interest in supporting the VA, a system dedicated to meeting our needs. Many DAV members seated behind me have experienced terrific injuries, including limb loss, paralysis, burns, blindness, brain injury, and PTSD. VA is important to them and all injured and ill veterans. Despite a difficult year and the many challenges that lie ahead for the VA, VA healthcare remains a vital resource. In fact, there's no substitute for it. As users of the system, we call on you to keep the promise. We ask that you protect, preserve, and enhance the VA so that it can provide a full continuum of quality and accessible health care to all eligible veterans. While we believe that the VA can and must address all its administrative and management lapses that led to the access crisis, in our view, the core underlying problem has been insufficient resources. Not enough doctors, not enough nurses, and not enough treatment space. Speaking of resources, last year's Midwinter Conference kicked off Operation Keep the Promise a campaign to protect veterans' benefits with advanced appropriations. We asked, you listened, and then acted. And we thank you for passing the bill last year. However, more work still lies ahead, and we need your help. This year's campaign focuses on issues concerning family caregivers and women veterans. A group that deserves unwavering support from Congress is family caregivers of severely wounded, injured, and ill veterans of all areas of service. We recognize and support these unsung American heroes who often sacrifice their own health, employment, and other life goals to care for their loved ones. Family caregivers of veterans have been doing this for decades. Our nation owes them the assistance so that they can continue fulfilling their vital role. We know that it costs taxpayers less to provide comprehensive caregiver support in the home than to provide nursing home or institutional care. Therefore, we call on Congress to extend support and services to family caregivers of wounded, 
injured, and ill veterans of all service periods. Finally, Mr. We are also passionate about ensuring that women veterans receive equal benefits and quality health care from the VA, and that they be properly recognized for the honor of their military service and their contributions to our national defense. Women are an integral part of the military today and face the same dangers in wartime as men. But federal programs and services do not consistently provide the gender-specific health care and support services they need to aid in their transitions home. Last September, DAV released a comprehensive report, Women Veterans, The Long Journey Home, and we have provided each of you a copy today. Our report recommends 27 actions needed to improve services to ensure programs are equally effective for women veterans as they are for men. We're pleased to support Senate Bill 471, the Women Veterans Access to Quality Care Act, introduced by Senators Heller and Murray. We look forward to working with both committees to pass this and other critical legislation. As a nation, we must ensure that the needs of all veterans are met. Mr. Chairman, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today on behalf of DAV and to share our proud record of service to veterans and to highlight our key leg legislative recommendations to Congress. My staff and I would be pleased to respond to your questions or comments, but it is important for us to remember our finest, our American soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard members who are deployed around the world in harm's way. God bless and keep them safe. God bless the DAV. God bless the United States of America.